So, uh, you know, if you think about it, you know, let's, let's break the discrete graphics and the integrated graphics to separate them. Because largely the integrated graphics, it's as much die area as you can throw at it and as much memory bandwidth as you can give it. So, right, you know, could, it, could we equal discrete graphics performance with integrated graphics? Well, yes, of course you could. It's just a matter of how much die area and how much memory bandwidth you choose to give it. And since you're trying to put that on every platform on the planet, you don't overpopulate it so dramatically to be way up here in discrete graphics. And again, in those two characteristics, how much die area for execution units, et cetera. So thus, you end up with integrated graphics, you know, and ours and other chipsets being meaningfully below that of the high end of discrete graphics. You know, I mean, up here, you're putting four, eight, 16 GDDR channels dedicated to feeding right, those graphics units. So that's a very different price point, right? And a very different die envelope and power envelope. Some of the graphics chips alone are what 150 watts in discrete graphics, right? You know, we build whole platforms for less than that. So it's just a very different design point as you go into discrete graphics. So in terms of integrated graphics, we're great, right? And we're going to make them a lot better as we're putting more focus on it in terms of more transistor budget, leading edge process technology, and more memory bandwidth dedicated to the integrated graphics. And then you run the standard benchmarks comparing us versus the other chipsets, and we're improving uh, significantly in that area. As you then go to the discrete graphics marketplace, uh, now you're looking at uh, you know, NVIDIA's uh, AMD ATIs, and that's where we said we'll have versions of Laravel, right, and uh, discrete graphics. And obviously, if we're going to be competing in the discrete graphics marketplace, we think we're going to have to compete well in terms of your traditional benchmarks like the 3D Mark. Uh, and we're going to have to support the traditional interfaces like DX and OGL. And as we've already said, we expect that given the programmability of our architecture, we will do well as ISVs start to embrace the architecture in a broader sense than uh, just the traditional view of DX or OGL. Traditionally, caches haven't been effective for graphics. Right. As we look though to these highly programmable architectures, we see that you actually get great experience from caches and thus we're bringing our leadership cache technology to this visualization and layer of the architecture and it's a coherent cache architecture so that you can partition uh, the problem across many cores and yet have coherency across them so you actually get effective use of shared data structures across the many cores. Uh, significant extensions to the vector instruction set uh, so uh, vector uh, memory, uh, operations, conditionals, and applications for both integer and floating point arithmetic. Uh, examples of this might be things like scatter gather. Again, you're trying to apply this architecture to you know, next generation algorithms. Most of those algorithms uh, operate on sparse uh, data sets. So things like scatter gather allow you to effectively pull across a large data structure into the machine. Right, as well as be able to uh, send it out of the machine after you've been able to operate on it in data parallelism mode. Uh, be able to operate over integer as well as floating point algorithms, right, because there are uh, you know, aspects to these workloads that are across uh, both of those. Uh, and uh, as you say, you know, this will be implemented in a very large vector unit per core right, that will give very high performance per core in both integer uh, thread count as well as uh, data parallelism. There'll be a new set of vector extensions for Larrabee. Uh, we're not detailing the instruction set uh, at this point. The idea of vector instructions are actually, you know, reasonably well established, right? You know, it's been around for, you know, 40 years so, you know, or, or so. So, you know, when you say vector and you go to somebody who is high performance computing space or something like that, right, they know what it means and you say, oh, vector, right, and they'll be able to do vector, you know, single precision arithmetic, how you, you know, store that, how you're able to operate across multiple operands uh, that way. You know, so, I'd right, say, as you look at the instruction set, you know, it's a reasonable, you know, it's a full vector extension uh, of the uh, architecture. Um, Things like scatter and gather, right, which I mentioned specifically, right, are significant elements of that uh, in terms of being able to you know, provide a programmable as well as a language extension that's compilable. You know, we're not releasing the instruction set at this point. Right? We're starting to describe what it looks like uh, without giving the actual instruction set uh, definition right now. Is it distinct from the AVX? Uh, we're not commenting specific since we're not giving the spec yet. We're not commenting specifically, right, on its relation to AVX quite yet. The difference that 
try to emphasize is it's IA programmable. Right? It's built on, and you know, the, you know, GPUs have slowly gotten more programmable, right? CPUs have always been programmable. These next generation workloads are highly programmable. And so what we've done is we said, oh, highly programmable workloads, we know what that's like. Right? We happen to have the best, right, the most successful and widely used programmable architecture in the history of computing. <laughs> Let's evolve it to be able to capture right, and be the solution of choice for those next generation workloads. So it will be a many core, right, many cores in parallel, big vector units per core, cache coherent, and IA programmable. So that allows us to bring all of the tools and assets for our software tools, right, industry uh, uh, software tools, programming libraries, internet compatibility, all of those types of things, and bring that forward to the Larrabee architecture. And right, if you could, right, you know, attempts to create new programmable architectures have been painful, heavy, hard lifting over time. And for the most part, they fail. Instead, we said, let's take IA and bring it forward and extend it for these new types of workloads. And that's what we're doing with Larrabee. And you know, that's, you know, that's the high order bit of a contrast right, between our strategy and some others that have been proposed uh, in the industry. Will we succeed? I don't know. The response so far from ISVs, though, has been tremendous. You know, I've been in this business for almost 30 years. I've never had a program that has gotten more enthusiasm from ISVs than this one. And since we've been laying the ground for this for many, many years, so in that sense, there's nothing, quote, new in that sense. You know, it's more parallelism, more of these tools, et cetera. Uh, we are, right, particularly as we talk about uh, Laravel and the AVX extensions, targeting certain classes of applications and workloads that have you know, traditionally been more experienced with parallel tools, uh, parallel uh, data structures. Uh, and then, of course, as we've already said, it comes down to the tools that are made available. And that's where many of the Intel software assets will be very important uh, as we go into that uh, segment with our developer programs, developer kits, and so on. So the comment in the room was, you know, that we're going to be years behind our rivals, right? And right, you're asking us to take a leap of faith. Well, your, your job is to write about the leap of faith, right? I'm not asking you to jump anywhere, right? You know, it's your perspective to give a view, right, of that. But let's look briefly at history of computing. How many times and how long does it take to make a major programming architectural transition. How long does it take for new tools to develop, new operating systems to develop, new libraries, right, new programs, new applications? That's not measured in years. That's measured in many years, sometimes decades. If you go back and look at things like the Emotion Engine or Cell, right, what was the response to ISVs for those architectures? What's been the response to CUDA as a programming architecture? The response from ISVs is, oh my gosh, this is heavy, heavy lifting, right? And thus, those ISVs move very, very slowly, right, in response. And I'll repeat my earlier statement. The ISV response to what we're doing with Larrabee has been the best in my history of developing chips for Intel. We've had a few successes in that history. One of the things that, uh, you know, we bring to the party, right, when we look at this whole task of visualization, is an aggressive uh, set of software tools. Uh, so when if we've gone and engaged and talked with uh, software vendors, uh, game vendors, algorithms, visualization, workstation applications, you know, the number one question is, what are your tools uh, for it? And we'll be bringing a complete set of developer tools, you know, building on our compiler, our debuggers, our tuning tools, our libraries, and bringing a complete set of those uh, to support both ABX as well as the uh, Laravel instruction set uh, when uh, we bring uh, that to the marketplace.